This is a game changer. Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. And I just got off the phone with the mad scientist himself, Bill Blanchin, and they have come out with probably their best process to date. And I'm super excited to show it to you guys. Now, I know there's already a couple videos out on it, but I wanted to talk to him first and get a full understanding of everything that this thing is capable of before I released it. And I wanted to show you guys a few different examples to show you just how powerful this tool really is. Now, these guys do the same thing with processing software that I like to do with these videos, and that's make astrophotography more accessible and easier. Whereas I try to do it with education, these guys take things that would normally take hours or even years to learn and allow you to do it with the simple click of a button. And they have done exactly that. And so I'm really excited to share with you their new narrowband normalization. This is one that you promise are not gonna wanna miss, so stay tuned. All right, so first, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. You're gonna have to install it, and the bad news is you are gonna have to update. Now, they just released a new update last night, PixInsight did, so today is August 29th. It is totally bug-free. I didn't have any issues with the first one because I have a Mac, but the second one was like flawless. So go forward with that, and then you're gonna do the same thing that you always do. We're gonna go into resources, update, manage repositories. You're gonna copy and paste, don't click on, copy and paste the link that I have in the description. You're gonna go add, you're gonna paste it in there, hit okay, and then you're gonna go back in in the same area and do check for updates. And then it'll obviously say that you have an update, close the software, reopen it, boom, it's installed. And the nice thing with this one, it's no longer in script, it's actually in processes. So we've gone big time with this, and so you yeah, just go boy. into process, color calibration, and boom, it's right there with the little gear icon. So what is narrowband normalization? Well, essentially what it is, is you're just equalizing all the channels so that they have a similar strength and that way your dominant HA isn't overpowering your O3, for example, and not allowing you to have all of your channels kind of speak loudly in the final image. And so you're really going to get the most out of your data. And instead of trying to take hours balancing it all out in GHS, getting the perfect stretch, trying to pull out that O3 or S2 signal and balance it with the HA, you can do it with the click of a button. And so I'm going to show you several examples of the different use cases for this because there are different types of images that this is going to work on. And so to show you just how great this really is, I'm going to pick one of my favorite images that I've done. And I took a ton of time trying to balance this and get the O3 to really shine and get that nice gradient from orange to yellow to green into blue on this elephant trunk nebula. And this thing does it with the click of a button. So while I'm really happy about it, I'm a little aggravated that I spent so much time doing it and it actually does a better job than I did. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it up. I got the narrow band normalization. I'm gonna select SHO for the palette. So it's only gonna work on the palette that you shoot it in. So you can try to experiment with the other ones, but it's really meant to mimic the one that you have. And what this is gonna do in a lot of cases if you are doing one shot color which is where this will really shine is if you're doing a dual narrow band and you want to get that false Hubble palette look this is going to make it so much easier you're not going to have to go through and simulate channels and do all this other stuff to really bring out that blue signal and the oxygen it's going to allow you to do it with the click of a button so let's start off though with a traditional SHO narrow band image with monochrome and this is what I came up with the final image here and then I'm going to go ahead and just click the preview and like right off the bat, it's super nice. The color gradient is actually more gradual than I have. But guess what? Like we're just getting started. You can go in and fine tune this thing. So you have all these other sliders below. And so this is really going to help you maybe even avoid some of those times spent in curves transformation or even having to go into Photoshop because you can do a lot of that fine tuning right in here. So what we'll do first is we'll show you the SCNR tool, which obviously is gonna do what we know SCNR does, and that's gonna take out some of the green. And as you can see, it's done just that. So if you're going more for that two-tone look, you can get that just by doing the SCNR slider. I actually like the green in this case. Uh, you have the O3 boost. What I love about this O3 boost is it does a really nice job of introducing the blue where the O3 is, but it doesn't add it to the background. It like somehow magically isolates it right where it's supposed to be. And then you can boost the S2 signal as well. And look at that beautiful 
beautiful orange and gold come out. Like this is so amazing and gosh, I wish I had this when I was doing it. You can also go into brightness and brighten it up. Now, one thing that happens when you add brightness is typically then sometimes the highlights blow out and you are supposed to remove the stars and being a bad boy, most of the other images they are, but you can go into highlight reduction and then just go ahead and drop them back down. Now, this one's pretty balanced. There's not a lot of areas that are blown out, so we don't really have to worry about that, but you can make all of those changes right in here and it just makes it much simpler than having to battle a curve. Now, the other thing you can do is you can change the lightness. Um, lightness is basically, you, we have a lot of people that are doing the H-A-S-H-O or H-A as a luminance mask. Well, that's kind of what this does really. So you can have it off, which basically isn't gonna do anything. You can then do preserve, which will preserve it. I've already stretched it, so that's not gonna do much. But then the H-A will kind of add the H-A as an extra layer. In this case, because I did take the time to normalize it and really strengthen in it, it's not needed, but we'll see in some other images where it is something that is valuable. So there's a lot of tools that this has at your disposal, and this is really going to help you um, with some of those final touches. So let's go into something that's a little earlier on in the process, because you might be saying, well, Ryan, when do I introduce it? And there really is no final answer on this. You can do this on stretch data. You can also though, without having to go through all the work that I did on those two, stretching them painstakingly in GHS one at a time, trying to make sure that the highlights and the darks all matched, you can just do a simple color combination and then do this process to equalize them all out and then just stretch one image. That's where it's gonna be a huge time saver. Now in this situation, it's a perfect example. I've combined the image. We did make it starless like we were supposed to. And as you can see, it's you know that traditional SHO look when you first get it, but it's really not that interesting. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset it again. We're gonna do the preview. I'm gonna go into SHO. And then right off the bat, it gives us um, a lot more of the kind of oranges and yellows than we had. But what I can do is, is I can just go in and bump up the O3 and get a lot more of that blue signal. Look at all this blue out here that wasn't even in the previous image. And then I can also go in and bump up the S2. And now look at all that gold, red, and amber really come out. Yeah, like that's... So my final image looks a lot more like this, but I had to play around in curves and GHS for probably a total of 30 to 40 minutes to do what I just did in 20 seconds. So again, something I wish I had a little bit earlier on. Um, I can also do some of the SCNR if I wanna get rid of some of the green, there is a little bit in the background. And then same thing, if I wanna bump up the brightness, um, I can do that and then reduce the highlights. So this is one, an example of being earlier on in the process to help you from having to stretch each image individually in GHS. You're gonna normalize it right off the bat and then that way you can customize the strength of each channel before you even stretch the image. We'll go ahead and close that one out. Now I wanna show you a HOO example. So this is like you've done a dual narrow band filter with one shot color. Maybe you've got the L Ultimate or the ALPT or the L Extreme and you've got this kind of look that we're also familiar with one shot color, which this is a nice looking image of the Siegel Nebula, but it's kind of boring when you, every image that you have is kind of that reddish, orangish color. And so what we do in this one is instead of going to SHO, we're gonna turn on the preview and we're actually gonna change it to, I'm gonna reset it. And in HOO, now look, we already have a great example of more of a Hubble palette look with that yellow and blue palette. Now, the big thing with HOO is there's actually separate modes. So that's mode one. Mode two is gonna give us more of that purple, pink magenta look, which is really cool. And then mode three is gonna be similar to one, just giving you a little bit different taste on the hue. So in this one, I kind of like mode one. And then if I wanna bump the O3 signal, cause it's typically weaker, I can do that. And then I can even play around with some of the different lightness modes um, and see what that gives me. So click of a button, instead of having to take the two channels, blend either a blue or green channel and try to create this, you literally just one button.
done. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update my narrow band guide. You can really do this early on in the process when they're still linear, and then that way you don't have to try to stretch three channels equally or try to tease out some of that weaker signal. This is gonna do it for you, and then that way when you stretch, you really have an idea of what the final image is gonna look like. And it's gonna save you a ton of time in curves or Photoshop or however you finish those images. So guys, I really wanted to get this out to you right away, but I wanted to make sure I fully understood the tool so that you guys could see all the value. Please play around in it. Leave a comment on which image it's helped you improve the most. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them below. Big thanks to Bill and Mike. As always, they've done another phenomenal job. Go over to their page, support them, thank them. And until next time, clear skies.